Welcome back to Wacky Will's Wide World of Wonderific Woodworking. <laughs> We're working on the transom. A while back, some of you guys saw, I found rot in my transom. Well, today I found a problem. A pretty good problem. My transom is gone. You know, when I got the boat in San Diego, I sounded the transom, I, you know, with a hammer. I sounded the outside, sounded okay. Climbed around in the lazarette, sounded the inside, it sounded okay. But there was, there was some cracking on the transom, on the outside. And I thought, okay, there's a little delamination I'm gonna have to fix. When I got here, as you guys saw in, a, in older videos, I took the name board off to try to fix it, and I found that, yeah, it had delaminated, and the water ingress had actually rotted the middle layers. So the outside was okay, the inside was okay, but the middle layers were rotten. So then the frame had a little bit of rot, so chiseled all that out, got that fixed, you know, replaced every bit of rot to where the frame was good as new. The old transom being plywood, right, it was designed specifically for plywood. The plywood transom was actually glued to the frame. And that means we have to do something with the same or similar properties. So what I'm doing is a strip built transom. It's not strip plank and it's not cold molded. It's somewhere in between. In doing so, what I will get is something very stiff, glued to the frame, that is dimensionally stable. All the, the strips going this way and this way, you know, in different directions, it'll resist moving in all directions. Plus I'm using teak for the inner layer, teak for the outer layer, and I have a bunch of random tropical hardwood we're putting in the middle. So we don't have to worry about it rotting as much. There's less glue joints, but it's still very strong. It's, it's got very similar properties to plywood. Let's get into it. I'm cutting the strips for the transom here, and I figured I would show you what I do. When you're working with something really long, it can be kind of dangerous to do this. Really, I guess you'd want to have a roller, but I don't have one. So you need something to support the board back here, right? But also, you need to be able to support it up here. So that's why I have this feather board here. So what I do, when you're cutting thin slices, it can be kind of difficult because what are you going to do, right? So you can set, you could set your fence here. I'm cutting quarter inch slices. So you could set your fence here to cut a quarter inch, but that's not very good because it'll tend, when, you, when the fence is that close to the blade, it'll tend to pinch the workpiece and then you can get kickback and all kinds of other things, which is why I have this whole set up going in the first place. So what I do is I use my feather board and then I position the wood, right, every single time. That keeps this, this makes, it kind of turns into a fence, right? This keeps the exact same distance from the blade, so my strips are the same. And every cut, I just move the fence closer. This is a cordless job site table saw, not a super accurate cabinet saw nor is it going to be nor should we expect it to do anything other than what it's doing so it's kind of a janky setup however when you're working in the field i guess on boats more so than anything else a lot of times some of those boats might be at, at anchor or something you know you can't you can't even take this kind of stuff hardly to it if you have to dinghy out but more to the point when you're on board ship like I have been on the galleon, you just kind of have to figure it out. You have to make it work. These strips, they're not all going to be perfectly accurate because of that. You know, I mean, it's a nice little table saw, but, you know, like I said, it's not a cabinet saw. So we're going to use a thickness planer and plane it all exact. So I'm actually cutting everything to 5 sixteenths so I can then bring it down to a quarter of an inch. My Delta Thickness Planer's Toast 
it's uh it's jammed oh, this really sucks i've taken the whole thing apart i've had this for a while but it's toast i've been messing with this now for three hours the thing's toast oh i don't know i need it though and i don't have time to get the parts and there's no place around here that sells them except harbor freight and they don't sell the delta they sell bauer I, I i don't think i have any choice i'm gonna have to go buy that stupid thing oh harbor freight beacon to the desperate harbinger of shoddy tools and hollow promises last resort of the wayward woodworker lead me not astray please provide me with a tool that i may plane my wood in thickness and in thin there it is take this up front for him real quick and then i'll walk you back and um just give me a good right. yeah, no i'm getting my thickness planner i'm getting the hell out of here before i buy stuff because you know whatever it's the only game in town so it is what it is so i got the harbor freight planer out of the box and already i'm seeing an issue with it right there's no lock if you look at my delta planer see there's a cutter head lock i don't know how i don't know how unless the gears are tight enough or something i don't i don't know how this is gonna ever plane anything not locking that's no good so we're gonna pull it out and give it a shot and see what happens Gonna test it with this here cutoff and see what happens. Oh wait! Just like I thought, this moves when it's cutting. Watch, I'll do it again. Now let's look at the result of this, shall we? Let's see if you can see that. Okay, watch. Are you watching? Look at that. It's horrible. This thing is horrible. This side we're about, about 11 sixteenths. And then it comes up, now we're 5 eighths. Come all the way up here. Now we're three quarters. This is this this thing's junk. Absolute junk. You gotta have a lock on the cutter head. You can't you can't make a thickness planer without a lock on the cutter head. You know, when I was at the store, I should have I should have noticed that, but I didn't think about it until I pulled it out of the box. Well, that's not gonna work. Not at all. Oh, this thing moving around. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix my delta. There's a place here in town I might be able to get the roller chain, you know, for it. We'll see. I don't know. This isn't gonna work. Not at all. I gotta take this back. This is this thing's junk, garbage. Roller chain here was bad on the delta planer. Um. I didn't know where I could get one. I didn't know you could get it, you know, locally here. So that's why I went to Harbor Freight and got that absolute junk. At any rate, I found out that uh, Tractor Supply here has roller chain. So I went down there, grabbed that, got this on. It was a little bit of a bear, but I got that on. Got it all oiled up. I'm gonna put this cover back on. And then we're, uh, we got a whole bunch more strips.
that's a day's work by God. Hell yeah. Look at that. You could make pillows out of that. Awesome. So we have to figure a few things before we make any cuts. First off, this bevel, we need to know that angle, right? And then this varies depending on where you are. It varies in depth and it varies by angle. Um, we're going to do most of this by one at a time, just kind of fitting everything as we go. But so for this guy, what I've done here, I've taken a couple of sticks, glued them together so I can establish a baseline, right? Now this isn't the same either. So this is good here. It's good there. But as you get farther away, that bevel is going to change. See, you start seeing some gaps in there. There's a big old gap there. So we'll get it close. And then we're just going to finish it out with the hand plan. Okay, now we're going to start closing this up. Um, how we're going to do it is first, we're going to take our strips that we've cut here. We're going to put them on. I'm just gonna start anywhere really um, but we're gonna get everything cut and on here before we do any glue right so we're gonna get the whole thing done and then take them off one piece at a time and glue so here we go you see I want to set this angle where I can easily mark it all right so I'm gonna mark it here that's gonna be where I cut that butt important as well is to mark where it's going right so that's super important so now I know exactly where it goes now we're gonna cut this line I just want to get this angle close to the angle thing I made here it doesn't have to be perfect because no matter what we do we're gonna be fitting it Regardless, so we want it just pretty close, but it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. That's the most angle we can get out of it anyway. So let's let's give that a shot. Buddy, that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Make sure we're on our pencil line. Yep. We're going to use screws to clamp this on. We're going to take the screws off for every layer. So screws go on, hold it down, clamp everything to it. Before the next layer, screws come off. The upper end here, this is the easy part. You know, that's all open, it's exposed, it's easy. So how do you get this right see there's it goes down in there you can't take a tape measure so what we're gonna do you need two rules okay so I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna put this right there so it's it's on the level that it's gonna be right so this is even with the edge of the plank I'm gonna slide this guy in and we're gonna see what our measurement is there that's one inch down, and we're going to try to do the same thing here. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see it in the camera, but we want, so that's, that's one inch down, right? So now what we can do is this. This is one inch thick, okay? So then all I do is line this up with that, okay? and then trace on the bottom of it with my pencil. We want to make sure it's nice and, and well lined up, firm grip.
Our next challenge is going to be cutting around these bolts. So the bolts hold the spindles. See? Spindle and then the bolt. I'm not going to remove those, right? There's no sense. I'm not removing the whole taff roll and all that. That's just silly. You see how it's square under here? It actually had what's called a window cut into the transom so you could access these. I'm going to do it a little bit different. Uh, I've done this before. What I'm going to do is for the first couple layers, because this will not stick out, the, the final layer will be past this bolt, so it, it won't stick out. What I'm going to do is cut around these, right, with the, with the planks. Then I'm going to wax them. I'm going to pull the nuts off the bolt. I'm going to wax everything. I'm going to drive these in. And then I'll have a hole where it is, right? Once I have that hole, I'll fill it with epoxy. That will make this tight, right? It's not going anywhere, and it's going to be completely filled with epoxy. But the epoxy will not stick to the bolt because the bolt will have wax on it. The uh, wax will be on the full threads inside the nut. So basically, if I ever need to take the spindles off, the epoxy is gonna be around the nut holding it all in place. And it'll be a perfect shape for the bolt. So I can just back the bolt out of the epoxy and it won't be any, any problem at all. Um, and I'll be able to put it right back in if I need to. It's not gonna go anywhere. So that is the plan there. So I'm gonna draw here. General shape of the bolt. Oh, yoke. And it's perfect. We don't have to do anything else to it. That's exactly what we want. Just a little box, see? We're just gonna cut around it and fill it with epoxy. Just gonna clean the end down a little bit. I got it close to the jigsaw and I'm planing it to the bevel that I can see. And this, I'm just doing this all, all by eye. I don't know, I, I guess there's a way you could measure it out, but I, I can look at it and look at this and I know if it's gonna work or not. So. It's because it's not exact, you know, it's not a straight, well, it actually twists just a little bit in there. So I'm trying to get it just right to where it lays right. It fits great, but we got to get around the through bolt. And you're drawing a, a little circle around this, right? So what we're going to do, and here's a tip if you ever are going to do this, we want to waste as little as possible. So the best thing you can do, do all the long stuff first because then you can take the cutoffs which are going to be these short little jobbies you know and piece those in so that's what we're going to do we're going to continue this over plus it's just 
helps for your sanity. I, I prefer to just get the meat of it knocked out, and then we can do all the complicated stuff at the end. The day is almost over with. It's, it's 7.30. I've got maybe an hour of light, something like that. Yep, so I'm just going to continue doing this, and probably I'm going to wrap it up here soon and get cracking at it tomorrow. Day 153, Gazillion. The transom's coming along, uh, albeit slow. Working by myself without any help, things tend to drag on a bit. You can always find somebody that wants to help you sail. Everybody wants to go sailing. But finding somebody that enjoys working with their hands and likes the beauty of wood, that can be difficult. You can always find somebody to help you that doesn't really like it. You know, you can pay somebody to help you. But they struggle along. They complain and, and they just don't like it. It's not fun for the person and you're not going to get the quality of work. And I don't really want to put anybody through something they don't enjoy. If you're going to find help, if you're going to find somebody to, to help you with a project like this, it has to be somebody that enjoys working with their hands and that's excited about wood the way I am. That takes pride in what they do. Even if they don't know what they're doing, if they enjoy what they're doing and they enjoy learning, then it's a wonderful process for both people. It would be nice to find somebody that's as excited about this as I am. There's a different thing that happens when you work on something yourself and you see it taking shape and you know that your hands built it, especially when it's beautiful. I think that's why I like working with wood. Wood is such a gorgeous medium because it's not just what you build. There's also the inherent characteristics of the wood and how it looks. You can see the green flash in the sun. Uh, you see how it was built. Uh, fiberglass just comes out of a mold. Wood, you see the planks. You can see the construction in it. And it's beautiful. You can see the craftsmanship. I'm eager to be done, though. I'm eager to get in the water and, and sail. So with a new day comes new things to accomplish, different challenges, right? We have this, and this is going to be a little bit different. So this per plank, you know, it's pretty straight. There's a little bit different process for what we're going to do here. I have this crazy thing. This is the only tool I ever bought that I saw on one of those Facebook ads. But you know what? The thing is actually really handy. So what we're gonna do for this next plank setup, we're gonna do this. See there? Now, this gives us the shape, and I'll show you from there. We need to come down an inch and an eighth, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark on the hull on either side of this. It's a boat yard. So there's all kinds of tools going all the time. So nothing I can do about that. You know what? I'm gonna make this easier to see with some blue tape. There's, there we go. That's a little, now we're gonna take this guy, put him here, and then bring him right down to the blue tape. And trace it. I also relieved it for the through bolt here. So everything should line up just fine. Yep. It's, now it's about nine o'clock, and buddy, it's already hot. I think I saw a mosquito over there, sitting in a lawn chair with a little tiny cooler of beer. Probably a case of blood light. <laughs> this blood's for you. actually pretty dang deep so we're gonna have to figure some things out here so what do we got we have got an inch and a quarter there and we have yeah still an inch and an eighth there I'm sure this needs to come down an inch and an eighth so that's an inch and an eighth there and then we're gonna come down just to make sure we're all even first we're gonna do an inch and an eighth here make sure this hasn't moved 
does not appear to have. And I'm going to check everything when we're done. Okay, so the important thing to remember, this is just a rough template. This right now, we just want it to fit in there. We're just cutting it rough, and it's better to cut it too long than not long enough because we're going to have to fit it anyway. We've got to change the bevel. We've got to do all kinds of things. And it fits great. First thing I want to do this morning is mark where the frames are. Before I get too far along, I need to mark where the frames are and I need to mark these wires. So that way when I get other layers on, I know where everything is. Sweating to death. <laughs> Sheesh. Holy cow. Check this out. Musical transom. <laughs> well, it's like 7.30 p.m. and I am tired. <laughs> I'm like beyond tired. You know, 95 million degrees today. But uh, but it's a good kind of tired. You know, I'm, I'm sore and that's good. All right, well, see you tomorrow. We need to figure out this shape here. See, now, we could make a template and we could do all that other stuff. We're not gonna do that. There's just no sense in doing any of that. I'll show you the best way. First thing we need to do, we're gonna remove this because that'll give us the angle. And the, and the angle, if you look here, doesn't change very much. It's almost straight right there. So we're gonna remove this. So we need to figure out both of these angles right you got to remember though they're going to be different bevels this one has a bevel the upper one's got a bevel and then the side one here has a bevel it's going to be fairly straightforward though honestly all we need to do get this bevel figured out right and then get this one figured out right and then just from the edge of that other plank measure the distance to this and then we're done Now that we got this angle established, we can set that 
flush to this surface here, bring it over and figure out this angle. So we'll go here. Now we put the other plank back on and then measure the distance of our marked angle here, right? And then whackaroo. Well, we also have to do the bevel here. So we have this bevel set, right? But we're gonna have to do this one too. Uh, but we'll get there. Yummy. <laughs> Much better than screws. Mm -mm. All right. Now we measure the distance. Let's see what we got. So that's showing an inch. And I'm going to guess the 3 16ths of the plank. So an inch and 3 16ths. That'll probably get us in the ballpark. It's better to cut it long because we're going to have to hand plane it anyway to get that bevel cut. So let's do that. say it was like it was made for it but it was <laughs> now it's back to business as usual you just mark them there's no crazy anything and get this closed up Difficult to hold it and mark it at the same time, though. Let me tell you. <laughs> and with that, it's starting to rain. So, this sucks. I really want to get this done, but I'm trying to work around raindrops. Hopefully, the rain quits later today, but I don't think it will. But hopefully, it does, and I can keep going. It absolutely hammered rain yesterday, all day. Looks like we might have some more. I hope not, but it's looking. So hopefully it goes away and we can get back to work. Well, the rain's gone, at least for a minute. So back at it. Rain again. So as you get to the edge here of the transom, because you have different bevels pinching it, and because it's wider inside than it is here, right? sometimes you have to take off the plank next to it, and sometimes we'll cut it, and then we'll have to take off a few planks. Then we're gonna fit this guy where he goes, because you cannot get it in unless you remove this plank first. This last little bit right here, we're going to have to do a template. I'm going to split the difference between this and go right in the middle. This will get us in the ballpark anyway. And you know what? I'm going to hold on to this side. That's absolutely perfect. I mean, we 
We completely nailed that. I don't know if you can see the hole. That's that. <laughs> the first layer of the transom is cut and fitted. It looks great. It turned out really, really nice. I'm just getting everything ready because we're about to start gluing the, the transom. And this is quite possibly the most important part. So when you're working with epoxy, you wanna make sure that you have everything that you need right away, easily accessible, in the event of some kind of unexpected circumstance, you don't want to be looking for something while the epoxy is kicking. So it's very important when you're working with epoxy, set up everything. Get everything you can think of and get it all together in one place, easily accessible. So you can just continue on and you have no surprises and no problems. So here's what we're looking at so far. The process you're going to see is a little bit different. It's not gonna be like most gluing planks on things. What we need to do, which I'll explain it real quick. See around the edge there? We want the planks glued to the frame. We do not want the strips, or sorry, the strips glued to the frame. We do not want the strips, the end grain, the edges glued to the planks. We don't want them glued to the rail there, and we do not want them glued to the planks. These cannot be permanently affixed to the frame of the transom. So everything's really tight in there. So how do we how do we prevent that and what do we do because we're not doing that? So everything is about the water, right? And preparing for the water. So first few things we're gonna do on the end grain, which I'll grab this just to demonstrate real quick. If this is the end of our strip. On the end grain here, we're gonna use this which is a rot resistant primer same same as that orange reddish orange you see there on the edges right then we're going to use the seam compound right like this and i'm going to use a syringe and i'm going to inject it right there on the planks and then squish this into it you want to make sure you have rubber gloves a whole box of gloves it's better to just chuck the gloves and put on new gloves when you need them and, you, and that's going to happen a lot so you want to make sure you have a whole box of gloves we've got our bucket to mix the uh, epoxy with okay that needs to be done with a mud mixer because this stuff is really really thick um got the sc johnson paste wax that's going to be for the through bolt so i can wax those again just brush a little bit on there i think we got everything but something will always pop up and then we'll have to run around like crazy but yeah, so let's get after it. So you mix this stuff 50-50, one to one. This, uh, the reason why this is in a paint can was it, uh, the container broke in shipping. So I, I just transferred it over it all. Come on. squish it to the edge. This is one of those times we don't want any squish out at all. We want to just apply it to where it squishes itself to the edge. Okay, next step. I have the Interlux seam compound in a syringe. So what I'm going to do so I'm just going to put it almost like a tube of caulk. I'm just going to put it along the edge, just the edge. So when I put the plank in, it squishes this in and seals it because we want it watertight, but we don't want it glued. So that's what we're going to do. Put this in there and it'll prevent any epoxy squishing up and gluing to the planks.
See, this is what we're looking at. This is the uh, seam compound. And we're just kind of squirting it down in there. Maybe that's the sound of me zooming so fast. Well, it's so hot that this just kicked in the bucket like that fast. It's supposed to have 130 minute, 120 minute time at 77 degrees, but I guess in 400 billion it kicks too fast. So we're gonna have to go to a smaller amount and do less. Phew! So it is so, it's been so dang hot today that I've had to swap things up a little bit. Uh, first off, I've had to change my clothes three times. It was so hot earlier that I couldn't even record anything. My, my phone would just shut down. And the epoxy just, no matter how I mixed it, no matter what I did, normally it has a two hour pot life. And usually in hot weather that I can get, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. And it, it was kicking in 10 minutes. So I, I literally wasted half my epoxy. Um, it turned my spatula thing into crap like <laughs> it just it just turned to mush i mean i i try to end up basically spreading the stuff on by hand so now we're gonna we're gonna compound this i think you see this giant cumulonimbus cloud that's a thunderhead it's like it's building and going high and there's thunder and rain right there and that's maybe six miles off but it's blocking the sun so i really want to attempt this now i've been waiting for it to get a little cooler because it was impossible earlier just impossible Man, we are on the home stretch. We just got this little bit left to do. I did not expect this to go this long. I mean, for crying out loud. Normally, if I have a helper and I'm doing this, I could have had this done in, what, two hours, maybe, something. But just, and when you're by yourself, everything takes way longer. Get in there. Good deal. Awesome. Check out the uh, check out the aftermath. So this is a very messy process, but look at this. It's an entire box of gloves. Each one of those gloves is actually two. I just wad them up together, one inside the other. But I had to go through like a ton of containers, gloves, that whole bucket. I got I got one 
scoop out of that and it just went pow immediately well the epoxy cured it got all the screws out now if you can see this glue line and stuff like that now we got to clean it all up So the first layer of the transom is done. Whew, it's a lot of work, but it's really coming along. On to the next one. A lot of you guys may not know, if you're watching this on Facebook, I have a YouTube channel. A lot of people watch on Facebook and nobody even knows I have a YouTube channel, I guess. Go over and check it out. It's the same thing, so <laughs> watch it twice. If you're on YouTube, I have a Facebook. So check that out. Look up uh, Willville. A lot of people have been messaging me and commenting how they can support what I'm doing here. Support me and my beautiful vessel, Shalimar. Well, just by watching and, and commenting and liking, you're, you're supporting. I mean, it, the most important thing for me is I'm hoping that my videos uh, inspire people to be able to do the work themselves, but also keep the wooden boat thing alive. There's a few, there's a few of us out there working on them, and, and this is part of it. So just watching, commenting, subscribing, that helps, but if you want to show more support, if you want to support the video financially, specifically, I have set up a Patreon. It's in the, the description. The link is in the description. And, you know, if you want to do that, great, do it. If not, keep watching. Tell all your friends. But thanks, and we'll see you on the next one for finishing it up. Mm -hmm.